Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. Alright, let's address the elephant in the room. I know it's not Halloween. Alright, that's long past. But, when it came to my Halloween videos, I ran out of time and I couldn't upload everything I wanted to. So, that's why I'm uploading them past Halloween. But if you stop and look at it like this. At some point in time, it's going to be Halloween time again, October. So somebody eventually will stumble upon my videos and watch it around Halloween time. So, yeah. And I'm here today to talk to you about Goosebumps Season 3, Episode 11, The Perfect School. So The Perfect School is one of like the coolest Goosebumps episodes ever. It's really interesting how it all came to be. It's not really your traditional R.L. Stein type, like, you know, horror story. It's more like Stepford Wives. Now, what's interesting is that their R.L. Stein's The Haunting now came out with The Perfect Brother, which is very similar to this, and it deals with robots being replaced by kids who are imperfect. What's interesting about this is that the original short story didn't deal with clones, it dealt with robots. Also, this was only supposed to be a one episode only arc, but they liked it so much they decided to expand it in a two episode hour long special. Now it's not really an hour long special, just like really just a two part episode. And what's interesting about this is that it does differ slightly from that of the short story, but also it has two completely different intros. The first intro is that more classic streamlined, faster intro from the classic Goosebumps earlier episodes. But then in the second episode, they go to the ultimate Goosebumps, where the intro is completely redesigned. It has slappy laughing cackling in the background there are bats there are more scenes from like the television show it's more flashy less eerie than what it used to be in the past but like slappy just laughing is like awesome and so like i'm really glad they expanded this to two episodes because if they would have tried to rush this on one episode that's 20 minutes it just would have probably been a disaster but i really like this and it's only on one single dvd when you put the dvd in it and once you just do like the trailers it automatically starts the episode and it's like the only episode on the dvd and so what's unique about this, it deals with your classic R.L. Stein bully. However, the show focuses primarily on the bully and other bullies. This is like the second time it's ever done this. And so that's very unique because in R.L. Stein stuff, it normally revolves around like a hero or kids. It's not so much a, a, a duo of like, you know, um, a brother sister couple or a boy girl like duo. It's not even really a trio, you know, there's a trio of kids in here. It's not really that of a trio. It mostly just revolves around this one boy and a supporting cast. Um, Brian O'Connor, funny he has that name. I think it's the same Brian name from the Fast and Furious movies years later and stuff. But Brian is a bad, 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 bad boy. And he likes to prank his younger brother. Now, what's interesting about that? is that in the short story, he does not have a brother and he doesn't go around pranking people, but they decided to do this because you know, the whole goosebump vibe thing, you know? And this is a million times better than, what's that movie called? Hello Darling or whatever it's called. Um, they have nothing on this episode. It's, it's crazy how a kid's episode is this cool in their thing and it starts off scary like i don't know what there's a little kid he's in his bed and he's scared relentless the lights get turned out it's a thunderstorm outside it's lightning and somebody is inside that boy's house and his parents are gone his parents are out dinner talking about like oh the boys are old enough to be by themselves and whatnot and so what would happen we've only been gone for an hour and somebody is creeping up the stairs with black gloves on and the boy is getting more and more terrified as he grabs a toy and he's shivering and he's shaking. And then the person opens the door to his room and he's hollering and screaming only for the parents to pull the mask off the intruder. And it's his brother, Brian. That was creepy. Like, I don't know what. <laughs> 
So they finally had enough with him and they sent him off to military school. A school called Perfect School. He doesn't want to go, but he has to go. While on the bus, he looks at everybody, but he sees one kid just with sunglasses on and reading a magazine. He feels like, all right, that's the bad boy I need to hang out with. <laughs> and basically, that's all Brian is, a bad boy. And it's funny how they make the audience end up liking him and stuff. So anyways... The, the bad boy on the bus with the sunglasses is named CJ. He's Asian. Why is that important? There's only been about four Asian characters in the entire Goosebumps series. Um, the television series, that is. And only three of them were actually main characters. And one of them was a main character in two different episodes. And it's very rare to see an Asian person on Goosebumps. And then the other boy on the bus, he is Jewish. Another rarity in the Goosebumps series. And so while they're there, it is straight up like military boot camp, like for little kids, juvenile kids and stuff. Basically what they're in, they're in like a school. And you can hear the echo, like the, the audio. They didn't have enough stuff better for the audio. It sounded like they was in a gym. And you can hear like this echoey type sound and everything. So basically the people who run this perfect school are like just the meanest of the mean people. The headmasters mean, all the guardians mean. This is an all boy school. Now what's different in the short story is co-ed. In fact, the mother in this episode is the only female in this entire episode and stuff. And so while there, and Brian has decided, you know, he just doesn't like being there. He doesn't like everything. He doesn't like this one boy who's kind of like a kiss up. And so basically he's talking, disturbing stuff, getting in trouble. They have to like scrub like the floors and like the staircases with a toothbrush. It is no place they want to be. He has decided he has had enough and he is going to escape. And, but what's interesting is he got set there because he's always pranking and scaring his little brother. In the short story, his parents just wanted a perfect little boy and he's not perfect enough. And so like while he tries to escape, it's like the coolest Mission Impossible type stuff there. They do some of the coolest things with this dude. Like it's uncanny. Uh, like when he first got there, he got into a scuffle with a boy named Billy. Billy Brown, I think his name is. Billy was sweeping and Brian's just kind of like all like, oh, you missed a spot and started shoving him and stuff. And so Billy is played by a kid who is in Welcome to Camp Nightmare. In fact, he is the only Goosebumps recurring character in the, uh, um, in the entire series. None of these other characters ever appear in another Goosebumps episode. It's very rare and stuff. So he tries to escape. Um, he's running outside and the alarm sounds. So all the guardians are looking for him and there's like a spotlight. They're trying to find him. He's tumbling on the ground. Like it's just cool. And he's, he, he, he can't get out of there because the gate is electrified and everything. So then they start doing a room check. So then he's like, crap, dude, I'm screwed. I can't get over the fence and I have to get back to my room, but how am I going to get inside? So he climbs up like the, um, the wall and goes through the window and just in the nick of time he makes it when the dude gets to his room the dude thought the headmaster thought he had escaped but then he's all like oh no sir i just wanted to put on my uniform and everything and everything why he was in his uniform when he tried to escape who knows but anyway cj realizes that like you know it was him that tried to escape and cj thinks that there's a mole he thinks this one dude is the mole and everything and so I think the, what's the one dude's name? Um, crap. I forget his name. I think it's starting with a J, Joe. He thinks Joe is like the mole and everything because he's such a goody goody two shoes. Well, when Brian does something to get in trouble again, he has to see the headmaster and Joe is there. He's all like, I thought you was a goody goody two shoes. Why don't we try to escape together? Blah, blah, blah. He's all like, I'm just pretending to be goody goody two shoes. I want to leave out of here. So basically, I forgot to mention. So there's like the Billy person, right? His program got accelerated when he got in trouble, but we don't know what that is yet. I like this whole vibe of like the military school and like, you know, like how hard they are on these boys and everything. But then it's weird because you start to realize this military school might not be what all it seems and everything. They seem to be like the bad guys and everything. But we know this is for a school of bad boys. Well, you know, 
he tries to like you know wander around and he's basically brian snooping around everywhere he finds some like samples dna samples he doesn't understand what that's about he sneaks into the headmaster room and gets on the computer and he sees that there's a nursery basically he's looking for a way to escape while all this the alarm systems um alerts them that somebody's on the computer this dude always almost gets caught but doesn't he's in the ventilation system he's roaming around there then his sweater gets caught then he has to take that off and he's in his t-shirt and then he telling like you know cj look man i'm escaping something weird going on and cj's like oh yeah man like you know i'll help you escape i want it out of here too so then when they're constantly looking for him he's ducking into one room into another and then he finds the nursery in the nursery are all these gross genetic things and they look nasty this is the gobby looking thing with arms and legs sticking out this is supposed to be a kid's show. And then he finds his clone. Why? Because one night when he went to sleep, he got drugged. And then he kept slipping in and out of consciousness. And people was like a bunch of like technicians, medical technicians were taking his measurements. And he doesn't understand why. This is when he wanted to escape the second time. And then he now realizes they built a clone of him and everything. And it's just like the clone has an umbilical cord to it. We see him rip the umbilical cord from his stomach. It's so gross. He tries to escape one more time. And then when he does, he runs into CJ. And then he realizes CJ throws him into a room with a bunch of boys in cages. CJ was the mole the entire time and has been watching him. That's why they was always two steps ahead of him. And so he basically gets away from that situation and he finds joe joe's program has been accelerated basically what it is these boys are so bad they keep them in their prison and then they send their clones to go live with the perfect family and so like then he's between those group of boys and his clone and then it cuts from that it's like crap what happened to brian then we see him home with his family he's the perfect kid He's polite. His hair is like um, nerdy looking. He's wearing like a sweater vest, all kind of stuff. And like he's like the perfect kid. So like, crap, dude, they got him and everything. And then his little brother's all like, I like the old um, Brian better. And then so when Brian is on his computer, um, his brother comes in and his brother comes in with his butt glued to like the seat. He's all like, I wonder who did this. And like, can it have been me? And, and, and everything. So it turns out the real Brian actually escaped the place and pretended to be the clone. So he's on the computer and he's trying to find an escape route so that the other boys can get out. And then we see the boys about to be fed gruel and everything. And then we see the clone Brian. He's all like, I'm the clone and everything. He just switched places with me. And so the guardian guard was about to believe him until Joe and the others are like, oh yeah, I'm a clone too, let me out. So then the, the guard's kind of like, nah, I ain't gonna fall for this. I'm like, dude, that was awesome. It would have been nice to see how he escaped, but then that would have took away from the mystery twist of it all. Now, of course, in the book, um, there's no gluing of the seat because he doesn't have a brother and it's just basically him being home being polite but is it the real one is it the fake one we don't know now it is kind of interesting how originally it's supposed to be robots but then they decided to do that for the haunting hour the correct um but it is, i like the whole clone thing better because when you see those clones in the test tubes it is very gross looking and stuff like that thing is just nasty. And this was a really good, creepy episode. It turned the bad boy and it made you kind of root for him in a weird kind of way and everything. And then you know, like, you know, it's like, it's like the whole Stafford wise, but it's so much better than Hello Darling. Now the dude who plays Brian, he's in the Resident Evil movies of one of the villains. The, um, uh, I think it's Albert Wesker or something like that. So yeah, I never knew that was him because he always wears shades in those movies. That wasn't that spooky. All right, well, I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>